On today's episode of What's Going On with Shipping, we look at the timeline and the scenarios for the rescue of the submersible Titan. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. So there was a press conference held earlier this week with the CEO of Pel Pelagic Research Services, PRS, Ed Casson. And this press conference was really fascinating for a variety of reasons, but there were two issues that I think need further investigation and discussion. Number one, the timeline. The timeline it took to get the Odysseus 6K, which is their huge remotely operated vehicle, from East Aurora, New York, just outside of Buffalo, out to the Titanic site. And then second, what was the scenario they're going to use if they had to rescue the submersible titan and he talked about both of those in the press conference so we're going to look at those if you're new to the channel hey take a moment subscribe to the channel hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out all right let's go ahead and jump into this so this is the odysseus 6k system now what's interesting about what pelagic has is this is a complete flyaway system i mean it is a self-contained unit containers uh, mounting platform and then the rov itself uh, 6k refers to the fact that it can operate at 6,000 meters depth so well within the, the the depth parameter of where titanic is at at 3,800 meters or roughly about 13,000 feet this is the unit in question a beast of a unit i mean this thing is is, is pretty big 98 inches long it's, it's 88 and a quarter inches high 5,500 pounds it is a big, big, huge monster with these huge, massive articulating arms in front, 25 horsepower motor, uh, seven thrusters, uh, and you name it, all the things you need, uh, inertial navigation systems, uh, video, uh, 4K, uh, visual, uh, lighting, hydraulics, everything, everything you need is, is on board this submersible. So the Odysseus 6K was a real good choice for it. Matter of fact, this system has been used by the Department of Defense and the Navy's uh, Navy Sea System Command to help retrieve downed aircraft out in the ocean. So a, a good track record for this. All right, let's go to that press conference. The first thing I'm going to do is give you a timeline of events. Let's give you a sense of the sequence. So it started June 18th, Sunday, the loss of the communications and tracking to Titan. About 17.45, local mean time, Eastern Daylight Time, we were contacted by OceanGate. So I think that's an important point right there. Number one, that it was OceanGate that contacted Pelagic. It wasn't the Coast Guard, it wasn't the Navy, it, it was OceanGate. So that's putting the onus on that company for part of this research, uh, part of this rescue. We immediately began assembling a team, sending some to St. John's immediately and sending others here to East Aurora. On June 19th, which is Monday, PRS began packing and mobilizing the Odysseus 6K ROV. Throughout the day, PRS staff arrived on site, and by late afternoon, PRS was at Buffalo Niagara International Airport mobilized for deployment. So this system is not pre-packed, ready to roll. I mean, they actually have the unit out. They were doing probably maintenance and upkeep on it. So they have to start getting it together. They have to get their personnel together because their personnel will be scattered all over the, the country. So they begin to get it together. Now, one of the things he's going to talk about here is the aid he got from the U.S. Department of Defense. Eventually, three C-17s from the U.S. Transportation Command through the uh, Air Force's Air Mobility Command are going to be tasked to lift this entire unit from Buffalo to St. John's. Where two U.S. Air Force C-17s were waiting for us. With the equipment staged at the airport, PRS awaited arrival of yet another C-17 with additional equipment required to not only load our kit at Buffalo, but to offload it at St. John's Newfoundland International Airport. So he doesn't talk about this third C-17, the need for it, and, and I'm, uh, I got a little bit of a query about that. I was wondering why they didn't have all three ready to go. But again, this, this has to do with the mobility, and he doesn't get into that discussion. It'll be something I'd like to hear later on. Tuesday, June 20th, 0400, we began loading to the three C-17s at the airport. We soon departed, arriving at St. John's, Newfoundland, in the early afternoon to the ship Horizon Arctic, which was waiting for us. So this is the Horizon Maritime site. So Polar Prince was the vessel from which 
you saw the launch and well, actually the tow out of Titan out of St. John's to the site. Uh, it's a former Canadian Coast Guard vessel used by Horizon Maritime. The ship they're going to be embarked on is this one right here, the Horizon Arctic. Very big vessel, uh, special purpose, uh, has huge accommodations on board. More importantly, a dynamic positioning system that's going to allow them to position the vessel, a huge area back aft to work along with towing cables up here. So if, if you want a vessel to be based on, Horizon Arctic is probably one of the best ones you could choose. Awaiting us was a ship and a team and a community ready to engage us to get us onto the ship and to get us underway. The last load, container, ship, you know, the truck arrived at the pier side, 2300, on June 20th. The ship was underway the next day, June 21st, at 0530. That's a really good, efficient offload and load time out of the trucks onto the ship. Uh, that, that's very good. From the last truck arriving to us leaving the pier was about five and a half to six hours. 70,000 pounds of equipment. Underway, sight of Titanic and the loss of, or the missing submersible at this point, of course, was Titan. About a day transit out size, there. The whole response team that we were going to integrate into was underway. There were at least 10 ships and aircraft active already on site. Underway to the site, we finished the integration and activation of the vehicle and rigged it for rescue. We arrived on site less than 24 hours later. 0430 local mean time, the Horizon Arctic, integrated into the ongoing and multinational rescue effort. At that point, within an hour, 0530, our system was launched from the back deck and began to descend to the seafloor. So they violated a few safety regards here that he notes later in this talk. Usually the Odysseus 6K will go down at a depth, a depth rate of about 25 meters per minute. They accelerated this down to 35. You usually have a depth rate so that you don't damage the onboard equipment so that equipment can go through the different pressure changes gradually. But in this case, because of the rescue operation, they were operating under a rescue operation. They decided to bypass some of those safety and accelerate the dive. Shortly after arriving on the seafloor, we discovered the debris of the Titan submersible. Of course, we continued to document the site. And by 12 o'clock, sadly, a rescue turned into a recovery. So that's an excellent rundown on the timeline. It, it, again, particularly fast. You have Sunday, the event take place. They're talking that night. Monday, they're prepping their gear. Tuesday, early morning, they're up on C-17s, flying from Buffalo to St. John's. Later that day, they're, Tuesday, they, they are on board the vessel, out. And 24 hours later, they're on site at the site where Titan went missing alongside Polar Prince. And by noon on Wednesday, they've discovered the debris. So again, a fascinating, really fast timeline. Now you can quip about a couple of things in there, but I think they, you know, for people who were not set for this and really done it before, exceptionally well done, exceptionally well done. So let's take a look at what the scenario was. Should they have found Titan intact? Of course, the scenario we wanted was Titan just lightly on the seafloor, the crew intact, the pressure vessel intact. That would have made the sub slightly negative or maybe slightly buoyant. The, what we did is we tied a, a, you know, a lifting mechanism into the center core of the vehicle, which we could not detach. Okay, <laughs> let's be clear what he just said there, which I found absolutely fascinating when he said that. They hooked a cable permanently into the Odysseus 6K to turn Odysseus 6K into a grappling hook, basically. This is what they were going to do, is turn this massive million-dollar uh, piece of, of scientific equipment into a grappler to grab on to the Titan, because none of the other ROVs could get down to the depth at the bottom of where Titanic was. He talks about this earlier, 
that there was another vessel here called the Deep Energy. And the Deep Energy is a, uh, a pipeline vessel. They had ROVs on board Deep Energy and they sent them down. The problem was they were limited to 2,700 meters, not 3,800 meters, but they sent one of their ROVs down to the bottom. They exceeded test depth. Their ROV suffered major damage. In other words, they went inoperative. Uh, key systems couldn't sustain that depth and they basically had to retrieve it by pulling it up by the tether. Uh, so they could not send ROVs any deeper. So they had a fleet of ROVs there. They just couldn't get down to where Titan was. Only the Odysseus 6K could do that. We were tracking our vehicle. So once we were, the plan was to grab the Titan. And once grab the Titan with our manipulators, then we had her. Then it was going to be attaching beacons. We were carrying extra beacons. So if we lost her, other assets could track her. So like, again, that, that's really key right there in that they wanted to make sure they didn't lose her again. So they're going to put beacons on her in case they drop her during the lift off the bottom at 3,800 meters up to the point where other ROVs can assist. And we were going to attach this heavy lift capability to the sub. At that point, we would begin recovery. So the additional planning included the other ROVs that were right with us. They were holding at 2,700 meters. The Horizon Arctic itself had another ROV. We were prepared, that vehicle was prepared to launch. We were prepared to launch that second vehicle to, once we came through 3,000 meters, then these other vehicles could join us. I, I gotta talk about how dangerous and how complicated this operation is. So Odysseus 6K with this tow line attached is gonna go down, grab Titan, mark it with beacons, and then start pulling it back up. Now, Odysseus 6K isn't lifting it. It's not using its thrusters. They have to pull it up because your center of, gra uh, center of gravity and buoyancy is all different. Uh, there's no way you can control Odysseus 6K. At this point, Odysseus 6K just becomes a grappling hook. And so you're going to yank it. You can't pull on the tether because you yank the tether out. So they put this really heavy tow line in it. Now, I have a question about where this tow line is off of. Is it off of the Horizon uh, Maritime vessel that they're on, or is it off Deep Energy? Because each of these ROVs that he's talking about have tethers coming down. So you have a myriad of cables floating in this water, and you can't tangle them. You can't Ghostbusters and cross the stream here. you got to keep them separated. And what they're going to try to do is, with the manipulator arms of Odysseus 6K, get it up to above 3,000 meters, probably around 2,700 meters, and then get these other ROVs to grab it and get more hands on it so they get more cables on it to help raise it to the surface. What a crazy operation this would have been but absolutely fantastic and fascinating it's just incredible that this is the operation that they're coming up with this is the level they're going to to rescue this submersible and they would also grab on we didn't want to lose her and then at that point we begin the translation to the heavy lift line that deep energy has. so it sounds like deep energy with one of their other rovs now they've already suffered the loss of one rov would be the primary lift so they're going to come in with their big heavy lift this this uh, deep energy is a is a pipe layer cable layer so it's got the big winches it's got all that kind of lift but as it says in its brochure it can only lift from about three thousand meters so they need to get it up above that three thousand meter level hook into it and then they're going to use that heavy lift there to get it to the surface i mean it's just it's, it's a little hard to explain and the visual of course is in all of our head but that was a real opportunity ed casson spells that out there is just an incredible operation was about to be undertaken just really you know my, my background for because people ask this all the time because what sal what the hell you know about any of this stuff good fair point oh we should ask that always ask that uh, I'm a maritime historian. I sailed as a merchant marine. I worked on a salvage vessel for the Military Sealift Command. I've got a master's in maritime history and nautical archaeology, so I know about underwater research. Uh, but I've never done anything like this, and there's very few people who ever have. But I could tell you one thing, that operating cables in, in, in the deep ocean is a very complicated thing. you got to remember, you're not just lifting Titan and Odysseus 6K, but 3,800 meters of cable. So, I mean, the amount of weight you're talking about here 
is astronomical and you start getting into uh, all the different calculations here wow it sounds like if titan was intact on the bottom of the ocean they could have came in lifted her gotten her to the surface and conducted a rescue operation now what they don't talk about in here which i would really love to hear is the salvage operation is how they started bringing those pieces back up because they still have the same issue with recovering the pieces uh, i'm going to envision that odysseus 6k was used again in this process either attaching lift bags to bring the big uh, titanium caps up or using Odysseus 6K to grapple onto them, bring them up to the surface and then transfer the load over to these other ROVs. But again, that's really complicated. Uh, not exactly sure how they did it. I would love to hear more about this, but this rescue operation to save the Titan is one that I don't think gets a lot of coverage, but it really should. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit the super thanks button down below, or head on over to Patreon, where you can become a monthly or yearly subscriber to the channel. Until our next video, this is Sal, signing off.